What's going on guys? I'm a regular guy with the Regular Guy Firearms channel. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I've been getting a variety of questions on this particular subject and I figured that I would just do a dedicated video based on it because a lot of people ask me, well, what do you prefer? Uh, a chest rig or something on a play carrier versus a belt, a battle belt of some kind or both, right? Now, here's the thing that I have on that. Okay, um, there, before you start to think about, you know, what type of gear that, um, that you're going to purchase and put on and stuff like that, um, you need to ask the following questions, and the following questions being this, and this is assuming that you have a few, that you've started out, you've been doing this for a little bit, you have, uh, a set of techniques that you learn and stuff like that. So there are a small list of questions that I ask, right, when it relates to stuff like this. And the first and foremost um, is what is your individual purpose? Meaning, what's the purpose of this gear? What's the purpose of you hauling around a rifle? that type of stuff. And the reason why I ask what is your purpose, meaning it's more along the lines of why are you carrying around the rifle and if it pertains to a job, what is that job? Okay. And the reason being is that lot in life determines a lot of different things because different people end up having to do different things. Uh, just as a for instance, right? A a team guy for a um, SWAT department or something like that, or a, a SWAT team guy within a department. I don't know why I weirded that, worded that so weird just now. I guess I'm dyslexic today. But that guy who's doing building entries and stuff like that on, on uh, a near constant basis, and especially if... Uh, this is a SWAT team guy for like a major metropolitan area where they do lots of entries on uh, buildings and stuff. Uh, consideration has to be made to where they are in their gear for a comparatively very short time. Now look, I know, I know um, SWAT officers and stuff like that will end up on scene for a long time, right? And it uh, sometimes it can um, be upwards to around a couple of days, maybe more, depending on what type of situation that you're dealing with. Most of the time, it's over a span of hours, right? Hours meaning two, four, six, eight, something like that, right? But comparatively speaking, that's actually very short, right? Um, if you spend under a day at a time in armor, that's, to me, pretty short, right? So... The difference between that and like a route clearance guy in the army or an infantry guy in the army and same spiel for the Marine Corps and stuff like that or any other, you know, military entity that does long distance patrols that can last days, right? Or dudes that end up on, uh, on cops or whatever. Okay, these dudes are in armor for just a long time. And what's on this armor? Medical equipment and ammunition and water and stuff, right? Um, so, you need to ask, what is the purpose of this? You know, if it's something like competitive shooting, um, then just minimalist is just the way to go. Absolute minimum, absolute comfort, absolute... Um, anatomically efficient, okay, because um, we're going to get to this later, but there are benefits and disadvantages to both, right? Now, the next thing that is, that's, should be a pretty big question uh, in your mind, and if it's not, here it is, is what is your uh, pre-existing technique for loading a rifle, right? Now, the reason why I ask this is because there are a few different ways to do that. 
okay? And we're talking, you know, you're out of ammo, you're trying to load your gun now. Okay. There are a lot of dudes that will go into a pouch of whatever variety and do the beer can thing, right? There are dudes that will do the index method where they come out when they where they come out of a pouch like so. And my personal preference for coming out of a pouch is to grab it like so. Okay, where I, where I have my thumb on a base plate of the thing, and then I'll just go ahead and kick out the old magazine and rock in the new one, right? Now, the reason why I ask this is because for different types of gear, whether it's chest or belt, these different loading techniques can be really weird um, with that different stuff. Now, if you're willing to alter technique and stuff like that to to uh, to the gear that you are currently wearing, that's perfectly fine. But if you don't, that is something that you want to consider when you're getting ready to put on this stuff, right? Because there are a lot of guys that do it real well, and because they'll have their magazine situated like so on uh, on their chest, and then they go to do the whole beer can thing, where they pull this mag out and then do this method instead, right? But what made me um, go away from that particular technique, right, because it's just a little bit easier to do anatomically, is to grab the magazine, pull straight out, and then do this, right? Now, if you don't want to give up the beer can technique, then simply reaching down like so into a belt is a little bit easier. So if you don't want to change how your hand situates on a magazine, then, you know, you may just want to consider not changing that because you're used to it, but putting the magazine somewhere else. Because just as far as speed and stuff is concerned, pulling a magazine out of here or pulling a magazine out of here is different. And generally speaking, just because of um, differences in loading techniques and stuff like that, guys that are doing the beer can thing, just as a for instance, right? They are much slower going up through the chest than they are just going straight to the belt, right? So, there's all that. <clears throat> What's your body type like? Okay, and the reason why I ask what is your body type like is because, look, we're built different. All of us are. Um, what is going to feel okay to do for you is not going to be the same thing for me or some other dude commenting on this video, right? So you need to make a personal decision as far as what feels okay as far as your body mechanics and stuff like that when you are doing reloads from either a belt or a uh, chest, right? So if you are a... If you are a long appendaged noodly dude like myself doing this kind of thing kind of fucks with me a lot right so I would much prefer going in a certain way um, be just because my body's different than a lot of guys there are a lot of dudes that have no problem with that so you're gonna have to ask that question also and the next one is is um, and I I missed the question mark here but whatever what environment are you messing with Okay, um, the type of environment that you in, that you are in is going to dictate the majority of shooting positions that you're in. If you don't think so, uh, ask a guy that's been to Iraq and Afghanistan, um, because it will make you change things, right? If you are a dude that's used to open field shooting and now you're suddenly in an urban setting, that proned out stuff happens much less. Okay, because there are just certain environmental things that are associated with urban environments that make you do that less. Uh, typically, there's more going on and you have to move faster. So, standing or kneeling or between the two is, generally speaking, what a lot of people end up doing. So, how does this affect gear? Well, just as a for instance, if you are constantly proning out, hitting the ground and stuff like that, stuff that is situated on your belts, it's going to jostle a bit more, 
Okay, this is a freaking reality. I'm not saying that you're going to be leaving magazines all over the friggin' place, but what I am going to say is, is that if you're uncomfortable with stuff jostling around a lot, you might want to change to something else. Okay. Um, however, if you are in an urban setting where there's just less of that, okay, and more of you running around and stuff, there might be less of that happening on your hips. Okay. So you're going to have to make a consideration as far as environment is concerned. Now, here are the two big ones. After I've asked all of those questions, now you are going through the individual uh, benefits and disadvantages of a uh, plate carrier or chest rig setup with ammunition or a belt. Okay. Now, pertaining to purpose, right? Um, Let's, let's say that it's a military role, okay? A military role, you're going on patrols, foot patrols that last, that last a very long time, okay? Um, so benefits of your chest, okay? It's balanced. It's very balanced because you can move stuff a little bit better, right? Um, you can move stuff throughout your chest without having to worry about bending issues and stuff. Okay, so you are a little bit better balanced. Um, if you have more ammunition up front, you can counterweight that with water and stuff, which you should be carrying anyway, uh, with like a camelback, which is, uh, which is a reason why I like them. Okay. Um, and yeah, there are a lot of guys that prefer canteens. Generally speaking, I do too, but that's not the discussion we're having. Right? So, um... The disadvantages to the plate carrier are what, exactly? Um, as far as a load-bearing system and carrying ammunition on my body, um, I can't find it. Because the benefits that wearing a belt has with ammo on it, because I've carried a 203 before, um, and have had to wear the bat belt with all with all the 40 mic mics in it, with the with the um, HEDP rounds and all kinds of stuff like that, and that belt with all of those rounds on it um, restricted my ability to bend a little bit better. And after a while, you start to feel that weight a lot in the hips. The major benefit that I had was that I was able to load faster. Now, this seems like it is just the reason to carry it, but no, nearly your entire life is spent not shooting at things. Even less time is spent loading things. Okay. So, being able to carry this stuff a long way without it wearing you down is a huge benefit. And that's why, you know, you know so basically your benefit is load faster your disadvantage is I'm going to feel it in my hips. I'm going to have reduced bendable movement and stuff like that because it restricts where the ammo goes because uh, I, I don't know about you, but I would really rather not appendix carry a rifle magazine. Okay. And then stuff like the smaller your back and stuff like that doesn't make sense. You know, so there are too many disadvantages over benefits in this regard, right? Well, what about technique? Okay, if you prefer a beer can method and you don't want to switch over to anything else, right? The belt may be the way to go because anatomically speaking, it is just much easier to have to just do this and then get your magazine, right? it feels a little awkward to do the method that I like on a belt. Okay, and the index thing is even weirder from the belt. You know, so it really just depends on what um, you personally want to do with your rifle. If you don't want to change your technique up, you have to weigh the, the benefits and the disadvantages from it as well. Okay, now I am a tall, thin, noodly guy, right? So whether or not I wear a belt or whether or not it moves around on me is usually a non-issue um, because 
typically speaking, I am not a very large framed guy, so pretty much any gear that I end up putting on ends up staying pretty tight to me, especially after you've adjusted it and everything else. You know, if you are a heavier set dude or just a big old stocky sound bitch, some of this stuff might hang out a little bit. Uh, taco pouches for the belt are just notorious for flopping around and shit. And don't sit there and try to tell me that they're not, because if you watch that stuff on video, they move a lot. And the bigger you are as a human being, the more that movement is. Okay, so, again, benefits, disadvantages. And now, Afghanistan is where I really have the most uh, room to talk as far as environment and stuff like that is concerned. Um, I spent a lot of time in dirt. Okay, I also spent a lot of time around trucks. And, you know, again, the benefits to carrying the ammo on the belt... Um, as a, if you're carrying around a 203 is that there's less weight on your individual chest or on the front end of your chest and that's less strained on um, your back in a certain way because you can pull some of that ammo off of the front end of your chest and put it onto your uh, hips okay but then you feel it in your hips also so that isn't really a benefit um, and honestly, it just and this is just my mileage, um, anything that I wore belt-oriented and ammunition just didn't mix because I felt it way more in my hips than I did my back uh, for any of that, you know. Um, and also, proning out and doing stuff like that um, is typically a little more problematic. Um for both systems really but if you are ex but a, a benefit to the belt system is that if you are proned out and you don't have all of your magazines up front and like this standard issue thing for the army is six mags on your body one in the gun right just running by that it's a little more difficult to have those six mags up front here and then go prone and try to get decently settled in and start shooting and if some of that is actually on your hips, it brings you closer to the ground, so life is a little bit easier that way. Okay, so again, you have to ask all of these questions, and you have to sit there and decide in your own mind, um, having asked all of these questions, which system is going to work well for you, right? For me, for me, <clears throat> and just going off of my personal experiences, I prefer to stay away from belts for the uh, for the reasons mentioned as far as just weight and where you feel it after really long periods of time of walking around and stuff like that. And just as far as, and that that is just like the purpose thing for the technique as far as loading a rifle and stuff like that. Uh, for an AR or an M4 or whatever, I prefer the index method. Okay, so for me, it's it. I'm doing less bending to just grab the thing this way. It feels a little weird for me to index off the belt. I know that some guys don't have any problems with that at all, and that's cool. But it feels a little weird for me to do that here, and it's really awkward to do the AK reload that I like to do off the belt the way that I want to anyway. So I just decide to slick up everything, keep it as tight as I can, and right in the center, um, for the most part, as far as mags are concerned, and I just load off the chest um, with the techniques that I personally prefer. Okay. It Honestly, that's a non-issue for a lot of guys, me included, mostly because this stuff doesn't move around a whole lot. But for some, it may be. But in my personal preference is that that's not even really a thing. Um, environment, right? Um, I live in a rural area. Or I'm sorry, not a rural area. A suburban metropolitan area, like right between it, okay? Because I'm before downtown. So, for me, right... It is just a little more convenient to have my plates and my medical stuff 
and my ammo on the same thing that I put on, right? Instead of having to throw a carrier on and snap the belt, okay? Um, and also, just there's just this thing in my mind, and I, I know that for a lot of cases, especially good pouches, this is just not a thing. But for me, there is just th something about the thought of running around with stuff on my belt and sliding around and stuff and getting into really awkward positions, pinching a magazine into the ground. Like for instance, I I load I would load dominant uh, predominantly from the right hand side. Oh, and by the way, if you're carrying ammo on both sides of your belt, you now have to do shit like this, where you're reaching all the way into that, um, which I prefer just not to do. Uh, and if you're only running it on the right side, then all that ammo distribution is over there, which is another reason why a lot of dudes feel it in their hips first, and it's another reason why they take off the belts after not very long, while dudes are still running around with their chest rakes, because it's centered around your core, but there's just something about me being leaned over to the right side, needing a magazine, and having to unpinch it from the ground that is scary to me, or worse, I'm in that weird position, and now I gotta kick out from it and go someplace, and the street took my mag. Um, that second one is probably not realistic, but the first one scares me a lot. Okay, because I might really need a magazine, but because I am rolled over on my side or shooting fetal or whatever, I can't get to it now. Versus it's right here, so I'm just going to grab it from right here. Okay, now if your purpose is totally different, um, what it, like if you're a competition guy or you're a, uh, a SWAT entry guy or whatever, this doesn't really mean anything because you're standing up and not doing a whole bunch of that crazy stuff all the time. You know, you might get into those weird positions every once in a while, but there's a reason why the competitive dudes keep that stuff on their belts because they don't do a ton of that. So they can compensate for the little thing, for the little things that arise here and there. Um, and honestly, anatomically, it's just faster. Okay, because getting this out from here puts you into weirder angles, uh, anatomically speaking, because having to go, you know, here to do this, rock it in there, and then charge it, versus just having to reach down to your belt real quick and get what you have to get done, um, this will tend to be uh, oh, quite a bit slower. You know, so it really depends on all of this and, you know, your personal uh, choices as far as technique and stuff like that. And whether or not you're willing to bend some of this in order to accommodate the gear that you want to wear. But this is just my thought process on, uh, on battle belts or chest rigs. I personally don't prefer the belts, but it's undeniable but that they're a thing and that they've been working for people for a long time. So I'm not going to sit here and uh, and knock you for it unless you're one of my friends in which I'll knock you for everything because it's open season on you people. You know, like freaking Dave who bought a 223 AK. We call it a gay K. But uh, that's my perspective on it, guys. So, you know, take it for what it's worth, and if it's worth nothing, that's cool. Just move along. Uh, otherwise, though, you guys know, that's about it for me. So remember, a regular guy's firearm is to last defense against tyranny. Be easy.